the idea is to be the first online digital uh, virtual studio um, that's available not just to the people that are creating content and putting it out to the world, but to the fans that are the lovers of the material that want to get involved with the process. So the idea is to democratize entertainment. It's also to kind of revolutionize the entertainment, uh, the online digital entertainment industry a little bit, and to uh, create a system that hopefully works better for the fans, by the fans, and so forth. So there's three words to explain. There's crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, and fan funding. So crowdsourcing, you know, of course, is I put up a project online and I say, hey, I need services. I need skills. And these are the 10 skills that I need, or however many, and people fit those jobs. And then you have a complete unit to go and create the thing. And it can be services or products, right? So that's crowdsourcing. Crowdfunding is simply, hey, crowd, hey, world, we need money. Um, more specific than that, Grok Studio is designed to be fan funding um, and kind of fan sourcing to go specifically to the geeks, the fans of existing intellectual properties that are beloved comic books, fantasy books, science fiction books, and to get that, those people involved in the process. Um, if you could yeah, create a great idea. I have so many ideas. Um, I sat yesterday for an hour and just created a whole bunch of ideas. Uh, one that I want to do is to create um, an online game that's really specific and a new different type of game. So, you know, we've got how many tens of thousands of people? Um, 7,000? Yeah, and there's like 150,000 people following Twitter, and it's kind of ridiculous. So to be able to source that crowd would be remarkable. So. How would I like to do it? I literally have been um, holding on to a domain name called changetheworld.com, and I want to build that, and I think that this is the type of mentality, the type of online nerd, tech, geek, smart, you know, educated and committed crowd to access for that type of project. Um, talking about Game of Thrones, could you tell us a little story or a curiosity about it? So, um, so many stories, of course, you know, um, personal stories, professional stories. Um, I always love to reference, you know, a story about uh, the negotiation with HBO because uh, the negotiation broke down at one point. Of course, people don't think about that type of thing. They just think, oh, it's a great show. But the reason that it broke down was because George had, for many years, had uh, really dedicated fans that were, you know, already producing certain types of merchandise, swords, miniatures, t-shirts, and so forth. And HBO is obliged by Time Warner protocols to acquire all the rights, and we came into conflict there. We couldn't, we couldn't settle the negotiation right away, and eventually they realized that the reason George was doing it was not because he didn't want to cooperate, but because he's so loyal to his people. And so they realized that they, he'd be loyal to them as well, and so they closed the deal. Can you send a message for the Kipuseros? Wow. Um, I think that what you're doing here, whether you realize it or not, you know, most of you are too young to realize that you really are impacting uh, change on the planet, and that, you know, other than, you know, all of the things that you have the potential to consume, you also have the potential to create. And in creating, it's really easy to fall into the trap of, you know, recreating things, but that's not where the originality comes from. You have to get out and you have to go on nature and go on a hike. You have to deal with people, interact with them, and, 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 and you know, love and lose love and all these things in order to create the thing at its best.